Hello. There are a lot of people who stand on the precipice of buying a Eurorack modular synth on the premise that they want to escape their computers and enter a world where you just turn dials to make music happen and you don't look at a screen anymore. And I'm here to tell you that you can have a very similar experience with Ableton Live, Max for Live, and some small affordable MIDI controllers. This is the Music Thing 8 Mu. That is a tiny little 8 fader um, device that has banks. And using things like the Grids Max for Live module or the Turing Machine module in Max for Live, which is a clone of a Music Thing module, you can create generative experiences just right here and now. And so, for example, I'll show you grids. So if I map grids to a MIDI controller, I put MIDI Learn on, I have this in Learn mode, so it's flashing, I can now map all these faders. For example, I could click the bass drum and map this one to bass drum, this one to snare, this one to hi-hat. The way that grids works is it's actually like a map of all the world's drums laid out on a table. And there's an X and a Y coordinate, X and Y now. And there's an amount control for bass drum, snare drum and hat. And so if I turn this off and put these down, watch this. Less hi-hats, more hi-hats. So these three become like a tap that I can control how much the drums are occurring by. And then this Y and X are the coordinates that change which pattern we're hearing. I can't change the pattern, I can just change the coordinate, which is almost the same thing. And while I don't have limitless patterns, I have a lot. And I've got three spare knobs here. Now, I'm using the selector kits, and the selector kits are these brilliant built-in uh, racks I only discovered recently, thanks to Ableton Live trainers. Um, you know who you are. <laughs> And um, the way that the selector kit works is that if you pick kick, you can turn this dial and just choose anything from 0 to 127. You get a different sample. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to map that to this. And I'm going to come into a clap here. I'm going to map this to that. And I'm going to come into hi hats. This one, closed, I'm going to map this to that. So now... So now these three control the selection of samples. These three control the amount of samples, and these ones in the middle are the coordinates. How good is that? Less hi-hats. Little flourish on the kicks. A few nice little ghost kicks there. Change the samples just by flicking some faders because we're using the selector kit. So good. eight fader like setup we've basically got hundreds of drum samples and we've got hundreds and hundreds of patterns and we've also got the ability to steer them live so good <laughs> so this is the kind of thing that even in a modular is actually quite hard to do. It takes a lot of modules, takes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds. 
especially the sample selection thing. Good luck with that. And like a conductor, you can have more or less. So yeah, I would strongly suggest something like grids and the Turing machine and a basic MIDI controller, just to explain the Turing machine. The Turing machine is a little knob and you can create a pattern by uh, putting it in the middle. It will create random patterns. And if you turn it to the right, it will lock. And if you go to the left, it will lock with twice the length. And by running it through a scale, everything it does is in key. At the moment, I'm being a bit clever and I'm using, um, I think I'm using this Turing machine to control the velocity. Something is controlling the velocity. But I could map that to this as well. And so doing, I would basically have the ability to have melodies and drums all controlled from a tiny little MIDI control. maps from MIDI controllers <laughs> to some nice reliant devices and save yourself thousands and thousands of pounds. You're welcome.